think we're I think we're on here. So good morning. Uh, we are definitely on now. Uh, but good morning, everybody. And let me move that out of the way. And uh, hope to uh, uh, hope you're all doing well today. Uh, and look forward to looking into the Word of God here this morning. Uh, and man, it is just it's cold, a little chilly outside. But it is just good. Uh, to know the Lord, and, and I hope you never get over the fact that you know Him, uh, and that uh, He's that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, he's that God that's in control, uh, no matter what is going on. And I hope you never get over that fact. And don't ever get over your salvation, knowing that, uh, uh, knowing the fact that uh, one day you'll be in heaven. And man, that's that's truly exciting. Uh, good to be on with you. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, good to be with you this morning, man. We had a great day in church last night, a great time in church last night. Man, it was windy, uh, a little bit of snow coming down in our area. I was told there was a lot of snow coming down in other areas and really windy, obviously, in other areas as well. Uh, and so some were not able to make it out to services, but we rejoice in those that were able to. And we had a good, uh, good group of young people last night. It's always good to... Uh, uh, to see young people in the Lord's house. Uh, we had the Rock uh, store last night. So our young people, they've been uh, saying verses and studying sections and been faithful in their attendance, and they get rewarded with these uh, Rock dollars. Uh, and they can then go to the store and purchase uh, uh, things for themselves, and maybe they purchase gifts for others. I don't know, but, but we had that last night. So thank you, Barnett, for heading that up. Great job. Uh, and uh, our young people, man, they thoroughly enjoy that very much, and it gives them something to look forward to. And so thank you so much for uh, organizing the store there. Uh, and then, man, we had a great study uh, in Nehemiah last night as we look at just some of the uh, hurdles that uh, that Nehemiah and the people there in Jerusalem had to had to jump over to accomplish the tasks that God had given to them in building the wall. And, man, it, it was a tremendous task for them to complete and they they had some opposition uh, and uh, we encouraged uh, we were encouraged in the Lord to just remain faithful in the midst of opposition and to keep on serving and doing what God has called us to do in the midst of difficulty and opposition and so I, I hope that it was a blessing to you last night those of you who were able to make it now uh, we are in Job chapter number 11 a new chapter a new speaker here <coughs> in Job chapter 11 and uh, I want to greet everybody who's watching on the church Facebook page. Those who are watching on the Rock Facebook page, thank you so much for being on. Those who are watching on YouTube, maybe later on, thank you for your faithfulness and watching. I encourage all of you uh, to comment, uh, and I encourage all of you to um, to share uh, our power up here. Okay, uh, so let's look Job chapter eleven and verse. Uh, number one. And once again, uh, I forgot to lead off with this, but welcome to December 1st. Uh, it is Thursday, December 1st. Thank you so much for uh, your faithfulness, man. Uh, I would say we could, uh, man, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Um, uh, it's feeling like whatever you want to want to say, man. It's December first. Uh, some have have said and sung. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and man, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. All that goes along with it, and hopefully you can as well. All right. Now, I've uh, I've stalled uh, long enough, and it's time for us uh, to get going uh, on in Job chapter. Uh, uh, number 11. So let's look at this verse uh, number one. All right, here we go. It says, then answered Zophar, the Namathite, and said, so, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. So this is the third friend of Job, uh, who is now kind of um, uh, pushing back a little bit on what Job has already said. Uh, you, uh, uh, We look at uh, Job here uh, he's kind of uh, uh, described his condition. Uh, he's kind of uh, even uh, described the Lord and the Lord's uh, uh, leading in life and the Lord giving life and all of that. And Job maybe uh, even questioning a little bit, saying, "Hey, what's uh, uh, why am I going through this, Lord?" And uh, we've seen that here uh, specifically in Job chapter number ten on that. But now we've got Zophar, uh, Job's another one, of Job's friends. Uh, who's been with Job for some time. You remember they sat with Job uh, in silence for days upon end. Uh, and now we've got Zophar finally speaking up. 
uh, and let's see what Zophar uh, has to say here. He says this, verse number two now, should not the multitude of words be answered? And should not a man full of talk uh, be uh, justified? And he's, he's accusing Job, said, Job, uh, you're all talk. Uh, Job, you're just a, just a bunch of words coming out, uh, and man, you're saying one thing, but man, you're living another. He says that should a man full of talk be <coughs> be justified, okay? Job, you, you seem to be talking the right talk, but come on. Come on, Job. Uh, we know that that's not true, and you know what? And uh, man, you're... you're and we'll see here in just a moment what so far actually thinks of Job, uh, and it's not very pleasant, it's not very nice. Uh, and he says, man, Job, you're just talk, 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 okay? You need to take some time and listen. Uh, you look at verse number three now. Should thy lies uh, make men hold their peace? He says, Job, you're, you're a liar. Man, you're just, you're all talk. And man, what you're saying is not true. He says, should thy lies make men hold their peace? Hey, uh, should your vain talk, your lies, uh, should it silence uh, uh, me? Should it silence your friends here and our response and what we are saying? Man, uh, you say one thing, but man, you're practicing another. Uh, man, you're lying through your teeth. He says, and when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed. Okay, you're, 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 you're talking too much. You're not listening enough. You're lying. <clears throat> and then we see also, uh, the, he says that, that he is mocking, uh, mocking the situation, mocking the Lord. Because he's lying, he, he's mocking uh, God's character and who he is. Uh, and, man, he says, you ought to be ashamed of it. When thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed. Uh, and and uh, Zophar now takes it upon himself, okay? Uh, you look at the end of verse number three, make thee ashamed. A, so, somebody needs to come back and, and rebuke you. Somebody needs to talk to you. Somebody needs to set the record straight. And Zophar says, hey, I'm that man. Job, you're lying. You're mocking. Uh, you're, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're talking a lot. Now it's my turn to set the record straight and to reprove you. Man, what a, uh, what, what a friend. Uh, man, you're a mocker. You're a liar. Uh, and uh, uh, you talk too much. Now, isn't it convenient that Job is the one going through all this, all this stuff in his life? And Zophar, he's not going through it. Uh, his other friends, they're not going through it. But Job is. And it's easy when you're on the outside looking in to diagnose all the problems in that situation. When you're on the outside looking in, it's easy to point the finger and to look at others wrong. It's easy to sit back and in your peace and comfort and judge others. And as, as, as we consider, that's what Zophar is doing here. He's, uh, he's on the outside looking in saying, Job, Look what you're going through, man. You talk too much. You're you're a liar, and you're mocking. You're mocking the Lord. You're mocking His character. Come on, Job. Uh, what a friend! After all that Job's gone through, now his his friends, as we've seen, have begun to pile on, and and Zophar's not holding back. He's just like, yep, Job, you've got problems. Now look at verse number four. It says, for thou hast said, my doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. You know, what is Zophar accusing Job of? He's, he's really accusing Job of, first of all, pride. You see those, those uh, two personal uh, pronouns. You've got my, you've got the word I. He says, you've said this, Job. And so he's accusing him of being prideful. And then also... He's saying, uh, he's saying this, he's saying, Job, yeah, and this goes back to verse number three. Job, you're lying. There's obviously something that you're guilty of. Uh, Job, there's something that you've been hiding in your life. 
<coughs> and and don't come out here and get all preachy uh, and, and don't get out here uh, and say that you're living right when we all know you're hiding something from the Lord. That's why you're being judged this way. And so, Job, you need to get right. Get off your high horse. Job, confess your sin and get right. That's what Zophar is saying here. Uh, and we know we know Job. We know God's description of Job. And we haven't seen pride in Job's life. We've just we've seen the questions. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the questions when you're coming with the right spirit. Uh, but man, Zophar here says, hey, I know what you said. My doctrine is pure. I am clean in thine eyes. But look at verse number five and verse number six. He says, but oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee. You know what? God just needs to speak and he needs to just say, what what you're doing wrong. We find here in Job, and I know that, that Job's friends and, and even Job maybe aren't aware of the background of why Job is suffering the way that he is suffering. But Job has, or God has already spoken, spoken out about Job. You go back. What does God say about Job. You look at Job chapter 1 and verse number 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And the man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. God's already spoken about Job. And granted, it wasn't to Job. It wasn't to Job's friends. Uh, but God has spoken and we see uh, uh, who that is. You look at the, Job chapter 1, verse number 8, the Lord said unto Satan, here's who he's speaking to about Job, hast thou <coughs> considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, uh, and sheweth evil. Now, isn't it amazing how quickly Job's friends have forgotten the character of Job? Uh, it's amazing how fast that has happened. Job is one that feared God. Should. You look at his body of work, you look at his whole life, he, he he walked with the Lord. He pointed people to the Lord. He interceded on his children's behalf, offered sacrifices for them in case there was something in his children's life. Uh, and Job's friends had to have seen it. They had to have witnessed uh, the life of Job. And now that Job has fallen upon hard times, now they come in, swoop in for the, for the kill, if you will, and say, Job, man, you've been hiding something all this time. That's not what the body of work says. Job's body of work says. Job's body of work points people to, to Christ and points to him living a righteous life. And Job's friends have gotten it wrong. Uh, and it, this kind of uh, reminds me just a little bit, and I know the situations weren't the same, but, but you look at, at the prodigal son, uh, and I'm not... And this is just kind of a, a picture, if you will, uh, an example. But the prodigal son, after he had given, was given his inheritance, and he went off, and <coughs> he was he wasted his living, lived a riotous living. Uh, and we read that that when when he had money, times were good, and his friends loved him. But you know what? When the money ran out, what happened to his friends? His friends left. His friends turned his back, or turned their backs on the prodigal son. We find him in the pig pen. We find here Job. Man, man, he's he's being tested, uh, and man, his his health is failing. He's lost his family. He's lost his wealth. His wife has said, "Curse God and die." And now his friends come in and say, "Job, you've lied to us this whole time, your whole life. You've prevent, you've pre pretended to be something that you're not." And you know what? You're full of sin. You're a liar and a mocker. Job, you need to get right. And in verse number five says, but oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee. We just wish that God would speak and tell us what it is that's going on in life. What great friends. Uh, and uh, I'll be the first to say this, man, nobody's perfect. But, and we ought to love everybody. When people are going through, through difficulty, Oftentimes, and in most cases, probably that that's not the time uh, to to go after people. That's the time to love on people, to encourage people. Uh, it, 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 it's often used as an opportunity to draw people back to the Lord, uh, and so we've got to have a sensitive heart 
uh, and spirit to, towards helping others. Listen, but by the grace of God, we're in their shoes. Remember who we are. Without the Lord, we are nothing. We're nothing. And so let's not look down our nose at people because they're going through a difficulty. And, and I understand sometimes those difficulties are self-inflicted. I get that. But what people need is they need some encouragement. They need some, they need some help, maybe some teaching, some training, uh, and, and all of that. And so we've got to be willing to, to do that to be an encouragement and blessing to people, okay? I'm going to end with that. I know it's kind of in the middle of a, of a thought there in verse number five going into verse number six, but uh, we are, are beyond time here this morning. Uh, and and so uh, we're going to let you go. Man, there's some, some man, what's, that's some tough, some tough love, or maybe not even love, that's some toughness coming from a friend there and not very encouraging uh, and, and really calling out Job, saying, Job, you're a liar. Man, that's hard. That's harsh. Uh, and so I uh, look forward to looking through the rest of this uh, uh, chapter here and, and what Zophar has to say. All right, uh, let me give a couple shout outs to those. I am so sorry. Yesterday, <coughs> I forgot to uh, greet people. Uh, and so I apologize for that. Uh, and hopefully, uh, 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 didn't offend anybody with that. I just got, I got caught up in, in the announcements of what was coming up and forgot to uh, forgot to uh, greet you all. So for that, I apologize. Uh, once again, if you're watching on uh, uh, the Rock Facebook page, thank you so much for watching. I don't have that up live, so I can't see the comments live, uh, but I will read them throughout the day. So be sure to comment, please. I thoroughly enjoy that. Uh, now, here we go. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Uh, have an awesome day. Stay warm today, man. It is chilly out there. Good morning, Cliff and Karen. Shirley, good morning to you. Uh, Lynette, thank you so much for watching as well. Uh, and then, uh, well, man, I'm having problem, problems with this. Okay. Uh, Angie, uh, lead Angie and Barnett family. Good morning to you. You guys have a great day and sorry. It's so cold down there in Arkansas. Uh, my feeling is this is about the cold. If it's going to be cold, we might as well get some snow. Uh, that's kind of the way I feel about it. Uh, but then you got to go shovel it. So maybe not so much. Uh, Jean, good morning to you. Uh, have an awesome day. Uh, Dick and Kathy family, good morning to you. Bill, good morning to you as well. Thank you for watching. Uh, and yes, happy December, Lynette. Sherry, good morning to you. Uh, continuing to pray for you. Hope that uh, that you are well. Perry, you made it on and good to have you on this morning. Jody, good morning to you. David, thank you for, for watching. Uh, and uh, for several of the other comments, thank you all so much for commenting. Uh, towards the end here as well. And thank you for those extra comments. Uh, appreciate that very much. Okay, if you haven't already done so, be sure to share our power up so that others can jump on uh, and be a part of it. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Once again, welcome to December. Have a great day, everybody.